in college, I was actually a dance major for a time. And, you know, that was great, but I was very interested in science. So I had to meld the two together. And at Hunter, I brought that melding of my love for dance and my love for science and my love for spatial thinking into the class called Choreographing Genomics. In Choreographing Genomics, we look at genome information flow through a postmodern dance lens. In this class, students are all choreographers, dancers, and inquiry-based learners. We are unraveling creativity through scientific inquiry. Today, what we're going to do is show you some of the collaborative work that students in choreographing genomics have put together from the spring 2015 year and the fall 2015 years. We'll be looking at DNA replication, transcription, not so much, um, because we can only show you some vignettes. So the first thing you'll see is DNA replication. You'll see that represented by these two ropes as DNA and people as the enzymes. And then we'll move on after that. The cells will divide. And we'll move on to show you some of the chromosomes of the cell. When I call out your number, if you got one, please stand up. Once you see the tumor genes come off of these, because we look at survival of the organism and how genes relate to that, um, then you can sit down. And then we'll finish up with one particular pathway that's near and dear to my heart called the P53 pathway, and it's downstream target Puma. So welcome to the cell. A tiny double strand of DNA, not but what would be two single codons had it been located on messenger RNA, elopes together in innocent bliss deep within the cell. When out from the night, a growling beast emerges to threaten their union and forsake them from the Eden of each other. The great Helicase, roaring across the nuclear plane, charges as it spots its prey, ripping into their ranks as it tears them asunder. And yet, there is hope, for in pursuit of the mighty Helicase, a molecule of primase enters, followed by DNA polymerase, which ushers in nucleotides. Hydrogen binding on the three prime strand and polymerizing in the five prime to three prime direction, making the leading strand with its own anti parallel three prime end. It hopes it can mend the loss they had suffered at the hands of that destructive beast. Meanwhile, the lagging strand is suffering more, openly weeping, its wounds much deeper and in need of greater aid. The polymerase wants to help, but it must await the primase, which veils a part of the strand in the primer, allowing nucleotides to bind and once again polymerize in the five prime to three prime direction, but discontinuously, as is their way. A 
But when the ordeal is complete, there is a great celebration. For what was once a happy union, through trial, has grown twice anew. The two groups then amicably part, leaving to each its territory unthreatened. you'll see the P53 signal transduction pathway. The tumor suppressor protein P53. The tumor suppressor protein P53. The tumor suppressor protein P53. P53 has a large regulatory role in many of the pathways that has a large regulatory role in many of the pathways that, when disrupted, cause cancer. One way P53 prevents tumorigenesis is by activating program cell death or apoptosis. When the DNA of the cell is damaged by ultraviolet light, P53 is activated. As a transcription factor, P53 activates a gene called P53 upregulated modulator of apoptosis, or PUMA. PUMA is a member of a class of proteins containing only a BH3 domain that promote apoptosis. The BH3 domain of the PUMA protein interacts with the BH3 domain of proteins in the BCL2 family of proteins that normally prevent apoptosis. This interaction inhibits the anti-apoptotic BCL2 proteins and allows PUMA to create a channel in the mitochondria of the cell. The channel in the mitochondria permits the exit of the cytochrome C protein, triggering a proteolytic cascade that culminates in apoptosis. 
organism. Sacrifice itself. The survival of the organism. The survival of the organism. For the survival of the organism. For the survival of the organism. And prevent the spread of disease. However, if P53 suffers a missense mutation, missense mutation, missense mutation in its DNA binding domain, it can no longer function as a transcription factor. If DNA damage yeah, yeah, yeah. occurs in a cell with mutated P53, Puma cannot be activated. Without Puma activation, the BCL2 family proteins will continue to prevent apoptosis. Instead of dying, the damaged cell will continue through the cell cycle and proliferate, 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 passing along the damaged DNA to its progeny. The DNA damage will accumulate in the descendants of the cell potentially giving them a selective advantage to survive. Eventually the tumor will metastasize wreak havoc, wreak havoc. Wreak havoc. Wreak havoc. Wreak havoc in the organism. The healthy cells unable to compete with the cancer cells will begin to die off and ultimately the organism itself will perish.